Hi, this is Thomas Stepan, and in this little video I'm going to talk about some advanced topics of digital up conversion with the M8190. I'm assuming that you have seen the how to demo digital up conversion, which shows the, the basics of demonstrating this feature, and in this video I'm going to use the sequencer to set up some more complex scenarios and show you how to do that. Okay, for this demonstration we're going to use a simple multi-tone signal and we'll just use the the default values here 21 tones from negative 50 megahertz to positive 50 megahertz we could you know arbitrarily choose any other combination what I'll do is I will download this and we'll take a look at it on the spectrum analyzer so next I want to show you how we can modify the signal using the sequencer so I'm going to open up the sequencer setup here and you notice it comes up with an empty sequence. You can use these plus and minus buttons to add and remove entries into the individual tables. I'll start out with putting an entry into the sequence table and by default it comes up with playing segment number one and I will play this segment 5,000 times so that we can see something on the spectrum analyzer and uh, what I want to demonstrate is how to use the amplitude table. So I'm going to create a bunch of more entries here and play each one 5,000 times. And let's see, we're going to use the amplitude table to modify the amplitude of this signal um, at runtime. So I'm going to create a bunch of entries here in the amplitude table and one, I'll, I'll leave the first entry at one, which means it's the full amplitude. Uh, put the second one, let's say, to 0 0.5 and then 0 0.25 and 0 0.125. So I'm cutting the amplitude in half on every step. Of course, you can put in whatever numbers you want, or you can import an amplitude table from an Excel spreadsheet. Now, in order to use the amplitude table, I have to use the fields up here. So on the first entry, I have to say, okay, initialize my, uh, my amplitude table, which basically sets the pointer to the first entry. And then I can say, okay, move to the next, move to the next, and move to the next. Uh, alternatively, I could do th the bottom three steps in a loop, but to keep it simple, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it in individual steps. <clears throat> so let's see what this does. Uh, just click download and run, and we can observe that on the spectrum analyzer, we have the same signal played at different amplitudes. In the second part of my demo, I want to show you how to change phase of a signal under sequence control. For that, I'm going to use a radar pulse signal, and I change the repeat interval to 12, 12 microseconds, and I change the pulse width to a pretty short 700 nanoseconds. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I want only a few periods on the screen. I want to capture this with the oscilloscope. And I put my frequency span to zero, which means I'm, I'm generating a CW signal. And I also change my carrier frequency to a very low 10 megahertz. Uh, obviously, this can be higher, but um, you know th I, I want to have only a few periods, so I want to use a very low frequency here. So when I download that, I can look at it on the oscilloscope. and there is my signal and you notice I downloaded since I downloaded that to both AWT channels I have um, a very similar signal on both channels now notice the pulse itself is similar but the phase is slightly different well that's because the two channels run independently the NCOs for the two channels run independently this is pretty powerful because you can use the center frequencies of the NCOs and adjust them independently. If you open up the soft front panel, you notice the carrier frequency can be changed independently for, for, for each channel. So if I take uh, carrier frequency of channel 2 as an example, and I increment that by just 0 0.1 hertz, you notice what happens is, let me move this out of the way, one of the signals stays steady and the other signal slightly moves because I have changed the carrier frequency. Let's go back and change them to the same carrier frequency. And to put a, a zero back here. 
and let's see how we can get them phase aligned. I'm going to use the sequence setup and in this example I will use one of the presets with two alternating actions and I will uh, use that to show you how to synchronize the two NCOs and also later on how to change the phase of the signals. If I select the preset it will preload my sequence memory with a bunch of entries and it also uh, populates the action table here with a number of actions. Uh, notice the, the actions 1, 2, 3 are defined down here and as my action number 1 as an example I'm setting the carrier frequency to 10 megahertz and I'm also doing a phase reset to 0 degrees. That will make sure that both channels are aligned. And then later on with actions 2 and 3 I'm, I can change the phase offset of the of the NCOs. So for now I'll, I'll keep that to zero so I'm, 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 I'm just putting the phase offset to zero. So up here in my sequence all I'm doing is I'm calling action one up here and, uh, and then I'm continuously looping between action two and action three. So when I download that you know the the two signals are perfectly aligned so they're, they're perfectly in phase. You can hardly even see the green signal behind the yellow one. Let me move the yellow one out of the way a little bit. Now let's see what the sequencer can do with, with the phase. I go back to the sequencer and I change this one to say 45 degrees but I only want to apply this to channel 1 not, not to both channels. Let's do this channel 1 and download and you notice my channel 1 changes phase between 0 and 45 degrees where channel 2 stays exactly the same. This concludes the advanced demo using the sequencer to control digital upconversion.